We're going to look ahead to Saturday's 10 games in the NBA, fantasy basketball injury updates, streaming, waiver wire, and we'll talk a little bit about the Cavs injuries. It's annoying. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the original Eshe and I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by PrizePix, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepix.com slash locked on NBA and use the code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. I could start out Operation uh, 100K subs right now. It's going to be pretty tough, I reckon, to get to 100,000 by the end of this season. But our next thing is, to let's say 85 by the end of the season. That's a pretty big goal. And then we can hit to 100,000 next season. And then we get that big silver play button to go at the back. That'd be great. But if you haven't subscribed yet, hit it. Love that everyone's been doing a big, big jump in subscriber numbers. We hit 70. We're going for 100. Let's go for 85 this season first, though. We are going to talk about everything that we need to talk about here in the NBA. We are going to put a certain LA Clipper under the lens. His name is Kawhi Leonard. We're going to go through all the 10 games on Saturday. There is a lot for us to talk about. So um, did I even hit this? I think I didn't. Let's hit it. Because we're looking. look ahead. Saturday, December 16. First full week of fantasy basketball for a while as well. How have you felt? Um, you're getting dicked with injuries. You're getting. Um, you're feeling good about getting the extra games in. Let's have a look. And of course, as it always happens, the first name on my list here is not an accurate injury representation because Pat, Pat Connaughton's back. I don't know where that came from. But Pat Connaughton is back and ready to return. Um, unfortunately, Chris Middleton is out. Uh, he's out for the first game of the back-to-back here across the weekend. So Middleton is back and or oh, is out and Connaughton is back. There you go. So that, that happened. Um, Lamelo Ball and Mark Williams are going to be out for Charlotte. We know Ball is out. The Williams one is obviously getting a little bit troubling, but it means that we still continue, and no one's really caught on to this. We still continue to use Nick Richards. He's still under 20% rostered. Um, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley. We got that news today. I put out a short here on YouTube. I put little videos out on TikTok and uh, out on Instagram about it, but let's talk about it now. Garland is out for a month with a fractured jaw. Um, at least a month. I think we're evaluated in four weeks. Not great. And Mobley's out six to eight weeks knee surgery. We were getting a little bit worried with Mobley's knee. We just we didn't know though. We didn't know what was happening. It was obviously like ruled out a day in advance was annoying. And now he's got to have um, knee surgery six to eight weeks. That means all star break basically. So we're talking whenever it's a knee surgery. This is my rule of thumb. It does not always work, but it works ninety percent of the time every time. When you look at the time frame that is given, always go to the longer time and even add a little bit on. That is a general rule to work for knee surgeries. They are cutting open your knee, and it is your knee. Then you can't condition, and there's a whole bunch of stuff you've got to be uh, careful with. So when they say six to eight weeks, I go, hmm, eight to nine. It will be wrong sometimes, but that is a safer way of viewing it. That means all-star break for Evan Mobley, and that is not great. But also remember... One of my other, I've got plenty of key tenants. Maybe I need like a stone tablet Moses style with my fantasy 10 commandments. The questions have already rolled in. Who do I add for Evan Mobley? Right? We have seen the Cavs play without Evan Mobley for the last week. And not one of you bastards went and scurried to grab Dean Wade. You didn't fall over yourselves to go and add George Niang. You didn't go, man, I cannot wait to get Tristan Thompson onto my team. So what makes you think it's any different now? Sure, something might change. They might go, well, we've got to just give 28 minutes to Dean Wade. He'll probably take two shots. And the complicating factor is the absence of Garland there as well. But it likely just doesn't change anything for those big men. We know what the team has been doing without Evan Mobley. They start Dean Wade. He does nothing. Nyang gets 23 off the bench. Thompson gets 10 or 12 coming off the bench behind Jared Allen. Allen gets a boost in security, but we already know that he's rostered everywhere. So... This, again, it's one of those phenomena 
which always um, confuses me when people ask that question when you've literally been seeing it for a week. The Garland one, different story. That's a really obvious one. We just add Karis Levert everywhere. I don't know that Levert will start. Mitchell will start at point guard. I know that. And you'll probably get, and Struess will be either the two or the three. So they could put Isaac Okoro in to start. But even if they do, I'm not adding Isaac Okoro in 12 10 leagues. Levert is going to get a boost. He's going to get a bump in usage. He's going to get a bump in assist rate. He is the guy. For deeper leagues, it's going to have to be uh, Craig Porter Jr. That's for deep, not 12, probably not 14, probably more 16. Him and Okoro in 16s, Levert in 10s, 12s, more points. At, points for Levert is better than categories, but he's going to be a most roster everywhere. And then those Niangs and Wades, that's deeper league stuff. Stuff can change, but I'm definitely not rushing to add the Evan Mobley replacements in any sort of standard format. I hope, I hope we got that clear. Jalen Johnson remains out for the Atlanta Hawks. Again, I could be wrong, but we have also seen this happen. It's also another thing, just quickly on Evan Mobley. You know my thing about injuries. You know it. I think you do. And if you're a new, new listener, new watcher, hit subscribe and listen up. Because past health does not give you any indication of future health in the slightest. Evan Mobley missed three games last season. Trey Murphy missed three games last season. Trey Lyles missed two games last season. Like, do you know how many of these there have been? Just because you are not Wolverine. These guys are not made of adamantium. Injuries can happen at any point. And yes, if you are in a situation where you've got to have a tiebreaker scenario, and go, well, this guy hasn't been hurt in the past, then you might take that guy. But you should never prioritize a player because he was healthy last season over another guy under the assumption that he's just going to stay healthy. It's not a real thing. I have done studies on this for years. It is not a real thing. And Evan Mobley, just another example of it. And I know that many people just forget about this next season and do the same thing. And someone will stay healthy and play 82 games and they'll be like, oh, well, look, he's, he's durable. Cool. It just doesn't matter. When you get hurt, you get hurt. And that's got nothing to do with your intestinal fortitude or the size of your balls or, or luck. Well, actually, it is. It's all luck. That's all it is. It is all luck. 98% luck, just in case you get upset about that. The Pacers still without Andrew Nempard and old mate Sticks. The, we know that that means McConnell's a great stream for Deepers and Jackson's a good stream too. The Heat are probably going to be, or almost definitely going to be, be without Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero. Hero's, well, Hero is definitely out. Bam is out too, so they'll be back next week. We just don't know some of the other guys, so their rotation is still in flux. Um, Zach Levine is out for the Bulls. Uh, Big Ben Simmons is out for the Nets, as is the wood-slanging legend Dennis Smith Jr. Lonnie Walker is out. Draymond Green is out. Gary Payton is out. Josh Green is out. Kyrie Irving is out. Um, Keontae George is out. Mitchell Robinson is out. These are all the ones that are out. I'm just checking if there's anything else that has come through um, injury-wise. No. Just if you haven't seen it, update for Friday's game. Horford is out. Porzingis is doubtful. And Jalen Brown is questionable, which are all the things that we talked about yesterday uh, with the expectation that that would happen. PJ Washington, I've got questionable there. And DeAndre Hunter is questionable. The reason that I don't know whether they're going to play is they're questionable for Friday's games. So I don't know that they're going to play on Friday. And if they do play on Friday, does that mean they're available Saturday or not? I'm not sure. The Heat guys, Highsmith and Richardson. Highsmith's missed about a week or so. Richardson's got that, uh, I think he's got the, is it back spasms or migraines at the moment? Anyway, it's one of those two things. He's missed a couple. And they all have impact on a bunch of different players. But we don't have updates on them yet. Um, Alex Caruso, of course, the locker room legend, left the last game with an injury. I, I don't know if he plays, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care. I'm not adding him. It's just, it's too much to deal with um, absences every second game. Contavious Caldwell Pope missed last game with a head injury. If he is out, they started Justin Holiday. And Reggie Jackson was probably the guy we look at. We don't look at Holiday. We don't really look at Strouther, it appears. Seth Curry, we don't know. We assume he's questionable. But again, that's not going to be a big impact, I don't think. Jeremy Grant is the big one. Because if he actually plays here, Jeremy Grant, then that team will be healthy and we get a very clear look at rotations. What happens with Brogdon, who barely played last game? What happens with Scoot? What happens with Thibel and Kamara? Two guys are going to be cut down to about 12 minutes out of that core eight guys. And we need to see who it is. Johnny Collins missed the last couple for the Jazz. Apparently, he's on the trading block, but they should be looking to trade Collins and Olenek. Uh, they could consider things for marketing if that came through. And I will maintain this. If you want to talk stashes, you can't do it in a standard league. But when we're talking longer term things, and when we hit maybe January 20th, 
Taylor Hendricks is going to be that guy. I am I am relatively confident. I've got him already in my deeper bench leagues. I've already added him. Added him three weeks ago. Because I just fully believe in this guy. I had him as either the fourth or fifth best player in the in the actual NBA draft. Fourth or fifth best player for Dynasty rookie rankings. I firmly believe in Hendricks. And now I've sent it on the court and I go, I'm all in. If Collins is out here again, it'd be interesting to see just how they use him. And the other one is, um, I'm fine to go back in. It was just a precaution. And I could have returned it if I wanted to. Legend Paul George, who missed the last game with a groin issue. Even if they tell me that he's fine, I'm not going to believe it. With him out, it's Norman Powell. It's obviously a big rise for Jim Harden. And then you get like a mere coffee as a deeper league stream if Paulie does um, happen to be sidelined. Today's episode is brought to you by the big fella that is Dave. At one time or another, we've all needed a little financial help. That's why Dave is great. Dave can get you extra cash when you need a hand between paychecks and can help you build credit by selling your extra cash advances on time. Dave is the banking app that is leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money that you need with no interest and then settle up later. You can even build credit when you settle up on time. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to make their finances easy. So if you're in a pinch, get the help that you need by downloading Dave. Download Dave today at dave.com slash locked on NBA. That is dave.com slash locked on NBA. You can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash locked on NBA. No terms or... So what do I keep saying no? It's There's definitely terms and conditions, the old T's and C's. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. All right, we are going to head back in now because it is time for us to take Kawhi Leonard under the lens. Because Kawhi started out this season relatively slow, but I think, well, not I think, I am definitely guilty of this. I sort of forgot that he had knee surgery on a torn meniscus. I was going, what's going on? Is this guy like partially washed? Or how is he? Have the knees, knee problems all just sort of built up and he's struggling? Like I took him in drafts in the third round in quite a few of my leagues. I think I actually took him in industry pickup around the third round there. And yeah, we talked about him being a second round, borderline, borderline first round player if healthy, but we didn't know that he was going to be healthy. And yeah, he just really struggled to begin the season. And then he just put the foot down. We saw Harden arrive and him take a bit back seat and get like 21 usage. You go, okay, is this going to be Kawhi from now on? Well, apparently not. Because over the last week, he's the ninth ranked player in minus one uh, for categories. He's 11th in points leagues, averaging over 50. That's Terry Rozier territory. He is at a 72% true shooting over the last six games. Now, of course, that is not realistic to hold, but this man has been at 62% each of the last two seasons. So he's going to be you know, low low to mid-60s in true shooting. But he is just not missing. 37 a night over the last six games. He has not missed a game this season. He's played in all back-to-backs. He's playing a shit ton of minutes, the most he's ever played. He's hitting 57% of his threes in his last four games. He's up to 52 over the last six. He's hitting 63% of his two-pointers over the last six games. And he's at a whopping 30 of 32 free throws over the last four games. That is eight attempts per game at 94%. This guy is dominating. Now, he's not getting big assists. That, that has dropped because Harden is there. The rebounds are fine at six. He's scoring. Like, he's up to 28 a game over the last six with tw- only 25 usage. It is just phenomenal efficiency. He's not this big steals guy anymore, even though he is at 1.5 for the year. He's not a big blocks guy. He's a perfect roto player. He's a f- very good head-to-head guy, but you know, obviously doesn't have those big weaknesses, but it's just all strengths right across the board. And if I have a look at his Z scores for the season... He is above average in every single category except for blocks where his Z score is negative 0.01. That is the perfect nine cat guy for the season. And if I look at the numbers over the last week, well, he is a positive, I believe, in every single category. Above average in every category over the last week. The perfect category league player. And he's doing all of this with his lowest offensive load since the 2016 season. Offensive load, he's at 40 this season. The last time he was under 40 was in 2016 at 37.5. 2017 is when things really started to step up for him and he's been carrying so much of the offense and he stepped it way back. Like he was at 43 last season, 49 the year before that. He stepped his load back 
And what, what is load? Offensive load is assists, it's box creation, it's shot attempts, and it's turnovers. So how much are you running in the offense? And it's down for him. That's still a relatively high level, but it's only 82nd percentile. So there's actually room, and we have seen this over the last week, that for him to step that back up and be like this literal Terminator with unbelievable efficiency. Of course, injuries can happen to anyone at any point, but this is the reverse of Mobley. The man who's never been healthy is now the healthiest man in the league. I heard, I, yeah, yeah, what, what do we know about that? It's, it's crazy. I don't think this efficiency sticks, but at the moment, if you've got Kawhi in the 40s or in the 30s, you are, as the kids would say, love and life. So that is, uh, that's Kawhi. That will bring us into talking about the next part, which is just on my radar. But first of all, or stream of the day we're going to do first, who's on the back-to-backs on the weekend? It's Warriors, Milwaukee, and Portland. So Brogdon probably won't sit because they've been cavalier with his health. I don't think there's going to be any Warriors sitting. And then the Bucks, it's obviously Chris Middleton. Giannis didn't practice one of these days, so maybe he's going to play on Saturday, but maybe he sits, but I doubt it. He's been His knee's been all right as well. The knee surgery for him cleaned up a lot of stuff, which is a huge um, positive there too. So who are the streams of the day? 10-teamers, I'm going with Big Dick Nick. He's 18% rostered. That's available everywhere, really. I'm going to have a look, actually, because we have, as I've mentioned before, the... Um, advanced roster metric over at Basketball Monster, which looks at standard 12-team formats, which we consider to be on a higher level, paid leagues, more intense uh, rosters and more managers, all that sort of stuff, right? And we have different numbers there. So he's at 18% rostered on Yahoo. He's at 54% with our advanced metric. So there's there's a bit of a difference there. Still, that's still widely available. And I don't know when Mark Williams is coming back, but there's also a Friday, Saturday back-to-back here for the Hornets. So I don't know what we're doing. 12-team, it's Dante Exum. 14-team, it's Derek Jones. Those two could interchange. I don't really know how it's going to work out. But with Kyrie out, Curry maybe out, Green definitely out, there's good value in those Mavs guys. For the 16-teamer, I am going for Tony Snell uh, impersonator Ayo Dusumu. He was great last game, but this is the level that I have Ayo. And that Ayo, and that's probably just with... Well, that's more, more interesting if Caruso is out. He is one of the worst permanent players in the NBA, even though last game was great. If Caruso was out, he might move into a 14-team level, but he's not any more than that. And then for points leagues, it is Levert for Yahoo and ESPN. You could very easily stream Levert in a... Or not, look, is Levert a 10-team stream? Sure. I think Richards for tomorrow has better value. I think Exum can have equivalent value to Levert for Category Leagues 12 tomorrow. But it doesn't matter. Levert, we're talking individual streams for Saturday. Long term, and that's where sometimes you've got to change your mind and change your ideas around things. Long term, it is very clearly Karis Levert. Because this is a four-week at least run for him, even though he was dealing with knee soreness. But this is at least a four-week run, whereas Richards might be one game and Exxon might be two games. So we're looking for individual moves here. They are the individual what happens on the day, but Levert is the clear long-term ad. And for points leagues, he just projects to be the best anyway, irrespective of all this stuff. So he's really good there. But just, again, don't get that um, don't get that twisted. Who's, who sings that song, Twisted? Is that Keith Sweat? Wow, 90s R&B throwback. I'm pretty sure it is Keith Sweat. Anyway, for those of you who are big Keith Sweat fans out there, this is the podcast that you come to. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy platform in North America. It's also the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS. You don't have to worry about getting pantsed by pros and going up against thousands of people, dealing with salary caps and all these late changes and all that sort of stuff. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's you against a player projection. So you might see Karis Levert, and you might see maybe Price Picks hasn't put the points number up for him properly. You might go, he's he's going more. We're getting more. And you put more on that. You know, you do a Kylo Ren style. Or you look at something else and you go, well, maybe they've gone too high on Karis Levert's assists. So you choose less. You do between two to six of those, stick them into an entry, and you can win up to 25 times your money back. So you put 10 bucks on it. The six of them hit. You get 250. And you know about basketball because that's why you're playing fantasy. And that's why you're watching this because you know what you're doing. And on Price Picks, you can go and have a look and, and test that actual knowledge over there. Plus, they're the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. If your bloke gets hurt in the first half and doesn't come back in the second half, that spot just gets rebooted. So you don't just lose out. The only injury insurance policy. So put those begging tweets in the void, in the draft, where you're asking um, other, other inferior places to void. 
PricePix has got the insurance policy already there. Go to pricepix.com slash LockedOnNBA and use the code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That is pricepix.com slash LockedOnNBA. The code is conveniently locked on NBA, and you get a first deposit match up to $100 dues. Price Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Okay, let us do the On My Radar. This is a very, very long show. Um, Detroit and Milwaukee. It is a back-to-back for the Pistons. I don't know whether Marvin Bagley is going to play in this one, but I hope to God for my own sanity and for Pistons fans that even if he does, they do not change Asar Thompson out of that lineup. For Milwaukee, I was going to watch Chris Middleton, but now he's been ruled out, so I'm not going to watch Chris Middleton. This is really helps Leaky Beasley, obviously. Who will they start? Maybe Andre Jackson? AJ Green? I don't know. Whoever it is, I don't care, and I'm not using them to straight. Oh, then maybe they put Pat Connaughton back in there in his first game back. Maybe. I don't know. Jaden Ivey and Killian Hayes are probably the big piss and stream guys there. It's a little bit hit or miss with old mate Monty and his um, wonderful rotations. And then for the Bucks, Payne or Connaughton, I guess. Again, I created this before I knew that Pat Connaughton was in and playing. Philadelphia and Charlotte, both of these teams are playing a back-to-back on, or they're starting a back-to-back on Friday, finishing it on Saturday. Does Embiid sit after just the tough matchups of Detroit heading into Charlotte? I guess he could. And that would open up, obviously, Paul Reed and a little bit of Marcus Morris for the Hornets. We're not expecting Mark Williams to play. Nico Batum is an interesting stream for the Sixers. Ubre, if he's available there too. And then Big Dick Nick, one of the best streams of the entire day. Atlanta and Cleveland, the Hawks on a back-to-back. We don't know whether DeAndre Hunter's going to play, but we know Jalen Johnson won't. What we do want to watch, of course, with them is what the hell they're going to do with the Nick or Kongwu. Well, for the Cavs, it is just about Levert. Do they start him or do they keep him in the bench role? I think they might keep him on the bench and play him 33 off the bench while the Coro starts. In terms of streaming, the Hawks are one of the most inept or absolutely barren stream deserts around. We don't need to do it. Wes Matthews would be the best one, but that's if you're playing in 70 team leagues. And then for the Cavs, it's very, very obviously um, Dracaris Levert. Indiana and Minnesota, this is a back-to-back for the Pacers. For the Wolves, I do want to watch the Wizard of Nas, Nas Reed, who played 31 minutes last game, while Towns and Gobert both played 30. Is that real? Are they going to do that? This has obviously nuked the value of Kyle Anderson. It's actually reducing Jaded McDaniels at the moment. They're making some changes, and Reed is dominating. I don't know that I have full confidence in it sticking, but who cares? It's great at the moment. For the streams, Neesmith's the guy there. I look at him over Obert Toppin in Indiana. TJ McConnell's also an option. Then for Minnesota, J.D. McDaniel's not rostered in enough. Not true. He's not rostered in 45% of leagues, which is actually correct. He shouldn't be. But that just puts him into the mix for us to stream in. Now, Saturday is a day with limited streaming. Some of you will be able to stream. Some of you will have full rosters. The next game is the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat. We have seen Nikola Vucevic bump up his usage and his assist rate with Zach Levine out. And I do expect that that continues. What we do want to see with him is efficiency because that has been a little bit of a problem for him all season. And I'm not sure how much of that is Levine related. In fact, I'm sure none of it is. For the Heat, I don't want to do this, but I want to do it because I know someone will get upset about it. What's going on with Jimmy Butler? I know he's probably preserving himself for the playoffs, but also worth remembering, in the playoffs, he wasn't very good. Yes, he did sprain his ankle against the Knicks, but he didn't dominate the playoffs at all. He did against the Bucks. Granted. And then he sprained his ankle when he came back, but so maybe it was that. But he looks like the same sort of guy now that he did back at the later rounds of the playoffs. I'm not saying that he's washed again. That's that's a joke, partially, but it's also you're 33, 34, a lot of lower body miles, and I'm a little worried that you're just never getting back to that level. And I think that's fair. So let's see what he does. Does he prove me wrong? Steals are down. There's a lot of stuff that's down for him. Efficiency's down. Streamers, we're looking at Paddy Williams, and then behind him is Dasumu. Surely, absolutely nobody has Kobe White on their wire. I want one person who's watching this to tell me whether Kobe White is on their wire, because he's like 20% available on Yahoo. And I made a comment the other day on my waiver wire show um, saying, I've, maybe I've got to adjust my must roster um, cutoffs, because how on earth is Kobe White still available in yeah, 21% of leagues? Does that mean that 21% of leagues are inactive? So what I'm going to do now is go and check to see whether Kobe actually has um, bumped up from 21% because if he has, that means that those extra leagues are active, which is, again, wild that they waited this long. So what is he up to? He's up to 81, so they were active. Bloody hell. What were those 3% of leagues waiting for? So now I don't know what the cutoff is for inactiveness because there's obviously a bunch of people who had no idea what they were doing and they waited until now, until now to get... um. 
as someone's calling. I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, apologies for that. Um, yeah, why would anyone would wait this long to grab um, Kobe White? In terms of, yeah, Pat Williams is obviously the stream for the, for the um, Bulls. And then there is Caleb Martin on the Heat, but there's just so many of them. And it depends on Richardson and Highsmith, but Kevin Love's in the mix. Orlando Robinson's further down the list. Jaime Huckers, Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, they're all worth 12 team spots for now. Moving forward, who knows? And we're going to get big changes to that next week. Um, Brooklyn and Golden State, that is the next game. I want to watch Mikael Bridges because he has been basically what I thought. I did not have him as a top 20 player. I did not have him as a first or second round player. I had him as a third-ish round guy and he's delivered sort of what I expected. He's actually probably been a little bit worse than I expected. I know that's been a huge letdown for a lot of people. But to me, this is sort of relatively realistic. But let's see if he's able to change that around. And then for the Warriors, I do want to watch Clay Thompson because I did have him on washed watch. And then last game, he was great. But what we need to see is him consistently do this. Derek Rose popped off for a big game the other day, but he's clearly washed. Is Clay cooked? Does he do it again? Does he Is he at risk of moving to the bench at all? That's a key thing to watch. For the streamers, Dorian Finney-Smith probably looks like the guy for me there in Brooklyn. And for the Warriors... Well, Pajemski and Kaminga are still over 50% available. I wouldn't say they blew everyone away in that first game, but they absolutely need to be 12-team rostered. But it also showed a little bit of the concern that I had with Draymond out that maybe someone, that they wouldn't step up into this world-dominating sort of player. And there's still a lot of ups and downs about how we're going to view these guys, but that change of Wiggins does further improve their value very, very clearly, I think. Um, When I say very clearly, I think, I mean... To me, it's very clear, but I think it's very clear to others. I think. <laughs> um, the Thunder and the Nuggets. I want to see Josh Giddy because last game, Giddy was very good. And that's probably the first time that I've said that all season. Is it a changing? Is he back? Is he worth a grab in a 10? No. In a 12? Maybe. I guess it would depend on who else is on my wire. We know that Giddy can be a top 80 player. He just hasn't been all season. I'm not really convinced he's going to be. So I'm not sure that I'd highly prioritize it. And then Peyton Watson, I want to watch in Denver. Not really for this season, because he was great last game, though. At some point, he is going to take over for Aaron Gordon in the next few years. And I think he's going to be a dominating... dominating. He's going to be like a top 100, at least, fantasy player. Better than Aaron Gordon is. So let's see how they use him here. For streams, we're looking at Lou Dort and Reggie Jackson. Guys that you absolutely do not need to roster, but are excellent stream options on days like this. Dallas and Portland, I want to keep my eyes on two rookies. Derek Lively for Dallas, who's getting like 30 minutes a night regularly. His field goal percentage is one of the best in the league. He blocks shots. He gets rebounds. If he's getting 31 a night, that is a top 50 player, amazingly. And the next one is Sterling Henderson, old scooter. Yes, he did damage in garbage time last game. But the key thing to me was in off the bench before Brogdon, played a lot of minutes, got a lot of assists, starting to look more comfortable. By no means is the problem solved. By no means is it like, see, told you he was awesome. By no means. He needs to be rostered, and we just want to see him do it again. And more importantly, I do hope Jeremy Grant plays so I can just get an outline of how this rotation looks. For streamers, we are looking at Dante Exum and Derek Jones in Dallas, and then for the um, uh, Blazers, obviously Scoot if he's available. But next we go to Thibault. But honestly, Thibault might be a 17-minute player if Jeremy Grant does play. In fact, he was 17 minutes last game in that blowout. The next one is the Utah Jazz and the Sacramento Kings. I do want to look at Taylor Hendricks because I'm pretty invested in what he's going to do moving forward. I don't know whether John Collins plays, but how do they run Kessler, Markin, and Collins, Olenek? Where does Hendricks fit in? Does he go back out of the rotation or does he cut into Olenek's playing time? What do they do with Fontecchio? I'm very intrigued to see how they use, them, use him here. And for the Kings, it is Keegan Murray that I want to watch. Stretched out Monte Morris has been middle season. I don't actually think there's a gigantic 20 plus usage role coming. The other thing I do want to watch, though, is Darren Fox hurt his shoulder at the end of last game. And if Fox is out, which I don't think he will, but if he is, then maybe Murray steps up. In terms of streams, Horton Tucker and Colin Sexton, I'd have Sexton over Horton Tucker, but Sexton's up to like 57, 57% rostered. Horton Tucker, while George is out, is a good stream guy. And then for the Kings, it is the pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. Oh, man, I almost died doing that. What happened to my voice? That is uh, too early on a Saturday morning. Knicks and Clippers. The Knicks are on a back-to-back here. And for the Clippers, it is Jim Harden who really turned back the clock last game. Is that solely because Paul George was out? Or is it just him figuring it out now and he's going to roll as a top 20 player? Because he's been great. In terms of streams, Hartenstein's still available in 55% of leagues. So he's the guy that I have over Sims there. 
does or is Taj Gibson's contract actually signed and does that cut in? I honestly don't think it does, but we'll see. And then Norman Powell, especially if Paul George is out, Powley is the guy to go with. In terms of two-for-ones, these are the Saturday-Sunday back-to-back streams. It's the Warriors guys, Pajemski, Kaminga, and then Sharich and Moody behind those players. And then Matisse Thibel on the back-to-back two. No Bucks guys really stand out to me. These are the top five back-to-back weekend stream guys that we can take a look at. For the chunks, so we're doing Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The only two streaming days really there are Sunday and Tuesday. So we're looking at who plays the two quality games. And that name again, Brandon Pajemski at the top, two quality games in the next five days. John Kaminga with two quality games. Dario Saric, obviously they all play for the same team. Um, Jeremy Sohan and Malachi Branham. You could even throw Zach Collins in there if he was dropped because we've got a good quality game schedule coming up. And the Suns also with Grayson Allen. And if Eric Gordon's healthy, yeah, we drop them. It makes sense. But there is a nice little chunk of value coming up for these guys in the next five days. To finish things off, we look at the 10-team streamers. Again, a cascading list. We start with Big Dick Nick at the start, Dante Exum, Caleb Martin, and Karis Levert. Of course, Levert, the most long-term value there. Chuck him to the top if you're looking for longer term. This is strictly for today's numbers or Saturday's numbers. Sadiq Bay and Leaky Beasley come in down the bottom as well with some good 10-team stream value. For 12s, Pajemski's at the top there. Um, Derek Jones, Taylor Horton Tucker, Kevin Love, Jonathan Kaminga, and, and Jaden Ivey. All those guys are available in over 60% of leagues. Pajemski and Kaminga are definite 12 team guys to grab. Jones is fine at the moment. Horton Tucker's fine at the moment as well. But there is quite a bit of value opening up on the waiver wire as we speak. And then for deeper leagues, these are 20% or below. Nico Batum at six. Nee Smith there. DiVincenzo, who was great last game. Orlando Robinson, who's been bad, but when we're in deeper leagues, at least there's a little bit of something there, maybe. And then Grant Williams and Terrence Mann to round out that list. And then for points leagues, 45% or below um, in terms of roster percentage, we start with Karis Levert. We go to Nick Richards, Caleb Martin, Pajemski, Exum, and Kaminga as the top six guys. Some very, very strong streams there, I believe. And that is the end of this daily look ahead for Saturday. Big in-depth discussion on the injuries in Cleveland, the Golden State Warriors situation, and everything that I believe that you need to know heading into Saturday's action. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up here on YouTube and leave your comments down below. And on audio, go and check out the YouTube. And on YouTube, when you're in the car, we've got audio versions. So download them both. Be a, not only just be an everyday here, be a double banger. Maybe that's what we're going to... Instead of, I know that our branding here is you're being every day and you listen every day, which is great. You guys do listen every day. I want you to be a double banger as well. Someone who downloads the audio version and then also watches the YouTube version. There you go. The double bangers. Who wants to be a double banger? It's a pretty cool nickname. Josh the double banger Lloyd. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.